where you want it. Bay 12, please. Hello there Transformers fans and welcome back to another Bay 12 video review and I know it's been a while since we've done a review. It has been a crazy busy few weeks. A lot of awesome Rebel Scum and Rebel Scum Con stuff. And if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about, check out our awesome Star Wars website, rebelscum.com. It's the world's oldest and largest Star Wars fan website in the world, not owned by Disney. And in that 30 year long history that rebelscum.com has been around, bringing Star Wars fans together, new and old for decades, we are hosting the first official Rebel Scum Con in 2024, June 27th through the 30th. For more information, go to Rebel Scum Conventions with an S.com. Once again, that's Rebel Scum Conventions.com. Anyway, back with some awesome Transformers reviews today. We are reviewing the new Transformers Studio Series number 107, Scorponok from Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now, as the Hasbro team said when they announced this figure during the live stream, they announced this figure in. While this is the first official Predacon in the studio series for Transformers Rise of the Beast, notably, Scorponok did not make it to the final cut of the film, unfortunately. The red double punch variants and beige sandstorm variants were the only ones who made it on screen, although I only really recall seeing the red ones, but they said that the Sandstorm ones were on there too, so hey, I guess I'll just have to look closer for them next time, and hopefully that means Double Punch and Sandstorm variants of this figure are coming at some point in the future, because I gotta say, I love this figure. This is the coolest Scorponok figure, in my opinion, ever released. I don't know what it is about this design that's clicked for me, but it's just super, super cool, and I cannot wait to get into it. So anyway, here he is in the packaging, open window packaging there. You got some artwork of Scorponok there on the front. You got a close-up of him in his scorpion mode right there, and a slightly less close-up of him in scorpion mode right there. And the reason they predominantly show him in scorpion mode is because when we see these guys on screen, specifically the double punch red variants, uh, they're only in scorpion mode, which, I mean, the same thing kind of went for Scorpidoc back in the 2007 Bay movie, which, very true to that, and there's a lot of character design elements that carried over from the original Decepticon Scorpidoc from the 2007 Bay movie that are present on this design, which is another thing I really, really like about this design. More on that when we have the figure out of the box, of course. And on the back, there are some images of Scorpinok both in robot mode and beast mode, which both modes look very, very cool, and the tail weapon is also really wicked looking on this figure. Anyway, that's pretty much it for the packaging. And of course, Scorpinok does come with a Studio Series backdrop, although it looks like we're back in the jungles of Peru. Although we didn't see any of the Scorpinok double punch or Scorpion Predacon slash Terracon variants in Rise of the Beasts anywhere near this portion of Peru because they were in the you know, volcano at the end during the final battle. Spoiler alert, in case you haven't seen it, but that, that's where they appeared. And then, of course, on the planet that the Maximals were on at the very beginning of Rise of the Beasts, we saw a couple of double punches going after the Maximals in that scene as well. Again, no Scorpinox though. Would have been cool to see him on screen. I really love the purples on this figure, but here he is on that Studio Series backdrop, so you can display him on that. And he looks pretty cool on that. And of course you could display in either mode, but I like displaying them in their robot modes, especially when they're on their backdrops. And here we have Scorpinox right out of the packaging. And like I said, this is a really, really awesome character design. I love the purples on this guy. The light purples are really cool and a nice little callback to the original Predacon Scorpinox who had some cool light purples in his color design as well. The tail weapon is really awesome looking. I kind of like attaching it on his arm like I have it here where it's kind of like Quick Strike's tail weapon from Beast Wars. What you can do though is you can just take it off, it just pegs right on. 
and drop his robot mode arm down, which his robot mode hands look really cool. And I like how for his beast mode, you just kind of add them to his scorpion claws here up at the top. That is just really adds to them, makes them look a little bit thicker and a little bit more just deadly, honestly. And that's just such an awesome incorporation into this design. You can store the beast mode tail on his robot mode in the same place it goes in beast mode. So you can just have it tucked on his back and just leave it there or have him wield in his hand or as part of his arm, which I also, like I said, really, really liked. Now on his robot mode, he doesn't really have a lot of visible insignia type stuff. In fact, really the only visible Predacon insignia is right here on his back in robot mode, which is more visible while he's in beast mode, of course, but it would be nice to have more visible Predacon insignia, especially since this is the only official Predacon we have for the Transformers Rise of the Beasts movie so far. For comparison, here he is next to the 2007 Scorponok from Transformers. So you can see them in their robot modes side by side and see how similar they are. I mean, essentially all they did was take a really cool scorpion mode both times and stand them up. That's it. They just stood them up. Now they got a little bit more creative with it with this version than they did with this version. And of course, this isn't even the Studio Series Scorponok. This is the 07 mainline release of Scorponok, which I like more than the Studio Series. I feel like the Studio Series is still a tad too small, in my opinion, for Scorponok. And Honestly, the play features and articulation on this one far surpass that other figure. So, you know, it's been around for a long time, but it's a toy that I think still holds up to this day very well. But if you'll notice, if you look at their face sculpts, you can see where some of this carried over from that original Scorponok head sculpt. And if you look at the pincers and his pincers and claws as well, you'll notice those inner turbine features that carried over from this design into this design as well, which is something I really like. Also for comparison, here is Scorponok next to the mainline Predacon Scorponok, which um, while this, you know, isn't the most amazing figure. This one is definitely way, way cooler. I also like the colors on this one much more than I like the colors on this one. Don't get me wrong. This isn't a horrible toy or action figure, but this is so much better. And because why not, we also have the Armorizer Scorponok that attaches to the little Scourge from the Beast Alliance line. And here he is next to the little weaponizer Scorponok that came with the mainline Scorponok. So you can have him wield a little, a little Scorponok as his own weapon, which is also kind of cool. He is fully articulated. Head is on a ball joint right here at the front of the torso because the neck is like this. So you can also bring that neck up for that scorpion neck joint if you want while he's in robot mode. It just softly clicks into place. Fully articulated shoulders, upper bicep, double jointed elbows, wrists are on a ball joint, waist, hips, upper thigh, single jointed knees, ankles are on a ball joint as well. The tail articulates here, here, and here where it plugs in at the base of the peg. You have the scorpion legs, which you can adjust as well while he's in robot mode. And that's pretty much it for his robot mode articulation. Transformation is very simple and straightforward. Like I said, all you do is to get him in a robot mode, you just take the scorpion and stand it up. So it's the exact opposite for beast mode, obviously. What we're going to do is we're going to rotate these arms so those double elbow joints are facing outward and then just collapse those hands and have him interlock his fingers into his little shoulder spikes here. 
And then what we're going to do next is we're going to bring that head up, let it soft click into place right there. The head's already in position for beast mode now. We don't have to do anything else to it. Untab the chest section and torso section. Pull out the scorpion mode arms. So you've got all this extra arm articulation now. And then what we're going to do is on this little double hinge joint, we're going to bring the waist up into the torso, untab the shins and bring them out. And then there's this little rectangular peg kind of at an angle on the inner side of both legs. And what you're gonna do is you're going to bring that back. It's on the back of the knee and that is going to tab in right, right there, securing those rear legs into a solid place so you don't have to worry about them moving around in the wrong spot or whatever. And then on this secondary knee joint, just rotate that other leg so it's standing right side up and just extend it and position it how you like. And that's pretty much it for that section. Now we can just close and tab that torso section. We're gonna put that tail right back on since we keep taking it off. And then come over here to the scorpion legs, bring them down and pose them in the position you like them in. And mind the legs popping off on you on those ball joints. Position that tail, position that head, position those arms. And there you have Scorpionok from Transformers Rise of the Beasts in his scorpion mode. And it is such a cool looking scorpion mode. I love all the different plates and armor panels and angle bits on here, all the little spikes protruding off of it. I love these big three claw like spikes where the pincers are. Like, once again, you got the little turbines on the inside of the pincers, much like on that original 2007 Decepticon Scorpionok design. And for comparison, here he is next to the 2007 Scorpionok design. And they definitely improved on that initial design by a lot. And that makes sense because the Predacons are supposed to be upgraded versions of the Decepticons. They're the next big thing in the Transformers generation. So it, this should be an improvement of this. And once again, I love seeing how some of the design elements of this guy, especially in the head shape and the way the eyes and stuff are arranged are kind of similar. And much like you have the little turning engine bits up here, those are also molded details in his back here. So if you look in between these little panels and bits, you can see similar engine parts and rotating bits, much like on the center of this Scorpionok present in this character design. So I love how they both honored and respected this classic and awesome take on Scorpionok with the Rise of the Beasts version of it, because this, this was cool and this is definitely improvement and I love seeing that and I love seeing that those design elements, once again, just carried over. Just as a fan of the original Bayverse movies, it's awesome. And since we already have them here, why not show them off next to the mainline Scorpionok in his Scorpion mode so you can see them side by side. And yeah, once again, significantly better than this toy right here significantly better. Here he is next to the Armorizer one from the Beast Alliance that goes with Scourge. So you can see them side by side. Not a, not a bad little extra army builder figure, but again, nowhere near as good as this one. And here he is next to the little Weaponizer one. So you can see him next to the tiny, tiny little Weaponizer Scorpionok. Overall, not a bad figure release at all. Hopefully we get those double punch and or sandstorm repaints on this guy in the future because I really love this mold and character design a lot. It is such a cool design. And I mean, when I first saw them on screen at the very beginning of Rise of the Beast, I was like, that's gonna make an awesome figure in studio series. I cannot wait for that one. But once again, 
now that we got it in purple, hopefully we get it in red and maybe tan slash orange at some point in the near future. Guys, stay tuned for more Transformers reviews and more Studio Series reviews. Check out some of our other content here on Bay 12. Like and subscribe and follow us on social media for more. And check out our sister website and channel, CoolToyReview.com, for all kinds of awesome toy reviews, news, and more. And for that Star Wars content, once again, go to RebelScum.com daily for daily Star Wars fan content. And like and subscribe to the RebelScum.com YouTube channel and social media for all kinds of cool Star Wars fan content there. And if you're a Star Wars fan, I want to see you at Rebel Scum Con later this summer, June 27th through the 30th. Once again, go to Rebel Scum Conventions with an S.com for more information. That's Rebel Scum Conventions.com to book your experience at Rebel Scum Con today. Check out CollectorsOracle.com, our free archival website, which has all kinds of awesome Star Wars collectibles on there where you can check in your collection for free, mark that you want to have in your collection for free, and share those lists with friends, family, and social media alike. And check out our physical location inside Order 66 Multiverse and the shops at Willowbend Mall in Plano, Texas, which also houses Order 66 Toys, the world's official all-collectible Star Wars toy store. And in case you're not local, they go live every single Friday night at 7 p.m. Central Time, and they ship all around the world. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. Transform and roll out. That's it, man. Game over, man. Game over. <laughs>